keeping her eyes fixed on the goal, as everybody seems to be at the moment, watching the World Cup, Alice Fern. And don't lose it from the studio cast recording of Footballers' Wives, a musical comedy noir based on the cult TV series with music and lyrics by Kath Gotts. Well, here on EPOS, well, it's half time, <laughs> but it's all still to play for. Coming up after the news, there's a living legend in Diva Double. Plus, I'm going to be telling you about seeing a whole company of stars in the making at one of the UK's leading drama schools, Mount View Academy of Theatre Arts, where, in fact, Alice Fern, who we just heard there, studied. But for now... This is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC News at two o'clock. This is Anthony Birchley. The Metropolitan Police have said the murders of two teenagers in South East London yesterday evening are linked. Kiani Solanke and Charlie Bartolo were stabbed a mile from each other in Thamesmead and Abbey Wood. Officers say they're keen to hear from anyone who may, may have seen a dark-coloured SUV-type vehicle in the area. Speaking at a news conference, Deputy Commander Richard Madonna offered his condolences to those affected by the incident. This is an extremely sad day for all of us who live or work in Greenwich. Police are investigating the tragic murders of two teenage boys and my thoughts and deepest sympathies are with their families and friends and indeed with local people in the Abbey Wood and Thamesmead who I know are both shocked and appalled by what has happened. The Transport Secretary, Mark Harper, has urged unions to back reforms to the rail industry to free up savings to fund pay rises. He rejected suggestions the government is blocking efforts to prevent further strikes. Rescue teams in Italy are still searching for a dozen, around a dozen missing people after a devastating landslide on the island of Ischia. Houses were buried in rivers of mud after torrential rain. One person is confirmed dead. A correspondent, Mark Lowen, has been surveying the damage. On the seafront in the area of Ischia hit by the mudslide, the dramatic impact is clear. I can see a few cars and two buses that were hurled into the sea. Such was the force of the torrents of mud. And then Further along, other cars smashed and battered, a lamppost that collapsed and trees uprooted. And everywhere, the sludge and mud that remains on the streets. Diggers are at work, the clean-up operation has begun, and with it, the search and rescue, with people still missing. Protests against the Chinese government's strict COVID measures have intensified, with some people publicly venting their anger at the Communist Party leaders. Thousands of protesters have turned out in cities across the country. Research by the charity Marie Curie has found that too many people in the UK are being let down at the end of their lives by inadequate out-of-hours support. The study said the current system leads to many patients having to make avoidable visits to emergency departments. Ruth Driscoll from Marie Curie says more measures are needed to allow people to be cared for at home. We want to make sure that everyone with a terminal illness can access the care and support that they need close to home overnight, on weekends and on bank holidays. And that means the governments in every part of the UK taking action to put that in place. We want a palliative and end-of-life care phone line to be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week in every part of the country. Costa Rica have secured a shock 1-0 win against Japan at the World Cup. The result leaves both teams on three points, with Spain, who are still top of Group E on goal difference, facing Germany this evening. Belgium are playing Morocco now. It's goalless at half-time, and Croatia take on Canada this afternoon. That's the BBC News at three minutes past two. Let's get the travel with Orna Merchant. Anthony, thank you very much. Well, first of all, to the Scottish Highlands, there's quite a lot of windy weather out there, with the bridges just having warnings. That's all the A9 Keswick Bridge, also the Sky Bridge. West of Glasgow, the A760 is still closed in both directions, between Kilburnie and Logs. The accident happened a while ago. Uh, also the A167, now that's Gateshead Highway, northbound at High Street. Roadworks are causing delays on Park Road, all the way back to the Gateshead Stadium. And Manchester's M60 on the anti-clockwise side, queuing all the way from the M60 
51 through to the Trafford Centre. It's shopping traffic really between 15 and 10. It's a slow crawl and Doncaster queues. The A1M northbound between 37 at Mar and 38 at Red House. That's because of a broken down coach. It's taking up one lane. The queues reach back to 36 near Doncaster itself at that junction and it's taking around half an hour. A quick look at the M4 for you and heading away from London. Junction 4 at Heathrow to the M25 at Junction 4B. There's been an accident which is closing two lanes. The M25 slow clockwise after the QE2 bridge there's an accident which is taking up two lanes so the queues are back over the bridge itself and clockwise again through Surrey 13 stains and that's round to Junction 12 as well at the M3 on the clockwise side we've got queues around the M3 in both directions though the M23 a vehicle on fire near the M25 at Junction 8 has closed one of the lanes I'll be back with more for you in an hour BBC Sounds app.